Hello and welcome back to my channel. I set up my table in front of me to look all nice, and you can't even see it. It is very difficult to get the terrarium and my table in front of me in the same shot. But when I was first getting my Crested Gecko, uh, I tried to find videos sort of like keeping crickets for dummies, and it was difficult and there weren't very many, so I decided to make my own. One of the most popular feeder insects for reptiles seems to be dubia roaches, but unfortunately dubia roaches are illegal in Canada and actually illegal in a lot of states in the United States. So it's unfortunate that so many reptile YouTubers use mainly dubia roaches because they're not allowed everywhere. And I, you know, I tried Roger with a mealworm a couple of times. I bought them and he just never seemed to want to take them. And personally, I'm terrified of buying mealworms and then them all pupating and becoming dark meat beetles. I just don't want to have beetles. So I just gave up on that. And now the only feeder insect that Roger or my crested gecko ever gets are crickets. Everything in this video today is going to be based on my opinion, what I do and what I find to be best. This is obviously not the only way to do it. And depending on how many reptiles you have, it might not even be the preferred way to do it. Personally, I only have one reptile, so I don't need to keep a ton of crickets around, and I don't need, you know, access to them all the time. So when I first knew that I had to get crickets, I bought a container to keep them in that did not have these black tubes. That was a mistake, and I regret it. I know that these cricket keepers, there's a bunch of different brands that make them now, uh, they're, they tend to be kind of expensive, and you might think that, you know, you can just buy, like, a tub. And you can, but if you're like me, and you don't like bugs, and you don't want to have to touch them, I really, like I, I'm telling you right now, I totally recommend getting one of these containers because you can just take these black tubes out and if the crickets are climbed up in there, you know, you're, you're taking the tubes out and you, you never even have to touch a cricket. And I hate touching bugs. I just, I'm not a bug person, okay? I'm a reptile person, but not a, a bug person. And unfortunately, these have to go hand in hand. So if you're getting into reptiles and you're just starting out and you need crickets, I'm going to say buy one of these containers to start with, especially. It'll be so much easier. It'll totally save your life. Setting up one of these containers is actually not difficult. The first time I used one, I put dirt in it, and that was definitely a mistake. From now on, I'm only going to use paper towels as my substrate, simply because it just makes it so much easier to clean, so much easier to see everything in it, and uh, significantly easier to see cricket poop. Cr cricket poop is like, all, they almost look like little grains of sand, and you know, once it starts to accumulate, it does smell kind of bad. Uh, I can imagine it absolutely reeks, probably, if you have, like, a gajillion crickets, but I typically don't usually have more than 20 in this container at a time. I know it looks really empty right now, but it's because it's dark in here and they're all inside the tubes. But, you know, it, ju it just makes it easier to clean, and I prefer to see what's going on inside here, so that's what I do. And you'll notice over here I had these orange cubes. That is how I choose to feed my crickets. A lot of people on the internet seem to just like to throw in vegetables into their crickets, which is totally fine. Of course you, you can just do that, but I prefer to buy pre-prepared cricket food. So this is the one that I use. This is the Fluker's uh, Orange Cube Complete Cricket uh, Diet. With this, you know, I paid $11, I believe, yes, eleven ninety seven. it says on the bottom, for this whole thing. And it's lasted me about four months already, and it's still half there. I keep it in the fridge. And this way, I know that A, they're getting the hydration that they need, and B, they're getting all the, the nutrients that they need. Because at the end of the day, it's very important that your feeder insects are really healthy and as full as they can be before you give it to your reptiles. So I know it's probably just in my head that I feel like they're not going to get all the nu nutrients they need from a slice of carrot. I would rather give them this prepared meal, especially because crickets require a lot of hydration. And I feel like if you just give them vegetables, you're going to have to buy like the cricket quencher as well, which is like solid water pretty much. Like why not just buy this and have them all in one, you know? So that's, that's how I feed my crickets. Now, I mentioned that I don't usually have more than 20 crickets at a time. That is my own choice, simply because, A, I don't want the container to smell. And it doesn't. It never, like, if I really am, like, really searching for the smell in the container, I can find it. But I really don't want it to smell, and so far, only keeping 20 or so crickets at a time, I have not had to deal with the chirping, not at night, not during the day, not at all. This is my bedroom, and I keep the crickets right there beside the terrarium, uh, so I really don't want to have to stay up all night with the chirping. And by not keeping too many crickets, I find that I don't have that. So if you go to your local pet store, probably not like a PetSmart or in the States, I believe we have Petco, but like I go to a sort of Ma and Pa owned, like a local pet store, and they actually have a program where I pay $25 for a card, and each time I go in there with the card, they check off the number five, and I just get five crickets. I usually get ten at a time, but, but it's a total check off two, but you know what I mean? Every time I go in there, I bring in this card, 
I've prepaid for my crickets so even someone else can go for me if they want to and they just give me the crickets in a bag and I put them in there. So that way I'm not really getting more than 10 crickets at a time. It's a smaller amount, it's easier to manage. Yes, it means I go to the pet store more often, but I'm not buying them more often because I prepaid for it. And it's just a smaller number so it's easier to manage. And personally, I like to run out of crickets. I know that that might not be everyone's favorite and you're probably surprised that it's my favorite because I am disabled, so going places is not easy for me. But um, when I run out of crickets, it gives me the opportunity to clean the container. And I want to clean it so that it doesn't start to smell. And I know the crickets probably don't care if it gets a little, like, gunky, but I care. So I like to clean it. That's just a personal choice. You obviously don't have to run out of crickets, but I like to do so. If you choose not to get a cricket keeper like this, just keep in mind that you need something that has really, like, solid, smooth sides. Because the crickets can't climb this. The insides of these black tubes are not smooth, so crickets can't climb them, and sometimes if I just look inside the little clear top here, I can see them. There's about six crickets in just this one. Um, but that's, that's really what you need, is you need something with high sides, because crickets, especially if you startle them, they can jump really high, so preferably something with high sides and smooth sides. Because Roger, my crested gecko, is still so small and such a baby, I, when I go to buy crickets, I specify that I need small crickets because I would be afraid that you would choke on big crickets. And so that makes this container the perfect size for the small crickets they're not going to get out. If I had big crickets, like I might have to upgrade this container size when he gets bigger and I have to get bigger crickets. But until then, this is just fine. I do also keep little tweezers around. Uh, I don't like, actually I really don't like these tweezers in particular. I find them hard to like squish together enough. Like I can, obviously I have the hand strength to squish them together, but I don't know, I just feel like they don't meet perfectly. And so sometimes I find it hard, even if a cricket is in there and dead, like I find it hard to grab with these. That's another really important fact to know about crickets is that they do die pretty fast. Their lifespan is not very long. So if you buy 30 crickets, you know, you're gonna have a couple that are dead the next day. Last time I bought crickets, I only paid for 10 and she gave me significantly more than that. And between being at the store and coming home, they had all climbed all over each other in the bag and like six of them had, had already died. That's also why you need something in the container for them to climb on. Like I have this little piece of egg carton here so that they're not constantly climbing on top of each other because crickets will do that and die. It reminds me of that, have you seen World War Z, the movie with Brad Pitt? when the zombies are climbing over each other to get like over the wall. That's what it reminds me of. Crickets will straight up do that. So try to give them stuff to climb on in here, but obviously not high enough so that they will climb out. And don't be alarmed if you feel like your crickets are dying fast because that's just crickets, they just do that. So you might be thinking to yourself, okay, Abby, how do I feed the, the uh, reptile? Crickets have climbed into the black thing. What do I do next? Now there are a couple of different methods on what you do next. Uh, this is how I, I do it. So any feeder insect, especially with like a crested gecko or something like that, should be like dusted, if you will, with some sort of supplement. So the two supplements that I keep are Repticalcium, because crickets need more calcium to be what the crested geckos need. And I also have uh, Reptivite, which is like a sort of multivitamin, if you will. Both of these are by Zoomed. This is the full size bottle of this, but this is still the sample size bottle of this that came with my crested ge gecko kit. This little thing is lasting me for forever. Some of the YouTubers that I've watched just take the powder and sprinkle it directly into the black tube. Like they'll, they'll take the tube out, there's crickets inside, they hold it up, and then they just pour the powder inside, shake it around, and then kind of let the crickets loose in the terrarium. I can't do that because I can't handle the black tube being that dirty. <laughs> Especially because the end is clear and that's how I see if there's crickets in there or not. So what I do, this is my like Tupperware, if you will, where I keep my uh, crescent gecko food stuff. So this is all the powdered prepared diet that I have for him. And so what I do when I'm feeding him crickets that day is I just take all this stuff out. I will pour some of the whatever supplement I'm using that day into here. And then when I'm gonna give him a cricket, I take the tube out. I dump the tube in here. I shake it until all the crickets are out. And then I put the lid on it really fast before they have a chance to jump out. And honestly, most crickets, especially the small ones, can't jump this high anyway, so I'm usually pretty safe. But that's what I do, and then I shake them up, get them completely covered, and then take the lid off and let them climb out into the terrarium. I try really hard not to shake into the terrarium, because I don't want all the excess powder to get inside, but sometimes it does, and then I just clean it up, because I don't like the white powder stuff everywhere. That's just me being a neat freak. Do what you do. I got this container at the dollar store. So I don't think it's some fancy, 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 fancy Tupperware container. It's not, I bought it at the dollar store. Some people will argue with me that it's better to hand feed your reptiles as in pick, like pick them up with the tongs and then feed it to your reptile directly. 
that is probably really great for like bonding and the reptile that associates your smell with the food and you know that's probably great but roger my little crested gecko he loves to hunt as soon as i put a bug in there i see like his pupils go massive and he just and he just tracks it all around the terrarium and then he'll like jump down and just c completely snatch it and like he'll have this cricket and it'll be like help me help me and he just like looks at me with it hanging out of his mouth like he's so excited he's a little psychopath and i love him and i i just like i want him to be able to hunt you know i feel like that's so much fun for him so i'm not gonna you know it's not like he's ever gonna get big enough to hurt me or anything so i let him hunt the crickets and i don't bother hand feeding him and that's the way we're gonna keep doing it so really if you're new to crickets my advice would be don't bother keeping more than you need to because crickets are generally pretty expensive and I really just, I would rather keep going out and getting them than have to deal with the smell or with the chirping. Like I said, I have not really had to deal with the chirping. For some reason, my crickets never just, they just never chirp and I've never really had the smell because I've never kept too many. Um, so don't, don't keep more crickets than you need to uh, and also especially they die so fast. So like if you go out and get a hundred crickets, half of them are going to die before you can feed them to your reptile. Don't keep more crickets than you need to. If you don't ever want to touch the bugs, like I never want to get a container like this with the tubes you can just take out and then pour into the container. It just makes your life so much easier, trust me. Um, I prefer to feed the little cricket food. It's funny because I, I got the camera, we'll pick it up from far away, but I can see all the cricket bite marks. So they're definitely eating. Um, so I prefer to feed a prepared cricket diet uh, you don't have to, I just think it's better and I would prefer to know that they have all the nutrients that they need. And then you, what you will definitely need though is something to sprinkle on the crickets because just the crickets themselves is not enough for, I, I, I'm gonna say most reptiles just to cover my butt, but I think all reptiles and, and amphibians too, like my, I know my friend has a frog and she's supposed to coat it with the powder, so. I don't know, man. Just do it. A little bit goes a long way. After I have the crickets out of the container, I just pour the extra powder back in here. Like, it really, it really will last you forever, and it's not expensive. So just, just factor that into a cost that you need. And then, of course, you should probably not be feeding your reptile only feeder insects. Depending on the reptile, there are other things that they will need. Beer dragons need salads and that sort of thing. But for Roger, because he's a crested gecko, you know, most of the time, I just make sure he has some of this Pangea prepared diet. I have a whole bunch of like biodegradable cups, but then I also have cups that are plastic that I bought at the dollar store that I just rinse out and recycle after. And I try to change his food of this out every other day. He does not always eat it. Sometimes it feels like a complete waste because I've mixed it together and he doesn't eat it. Uh, but I just like to always make sure he has food around because I always have food around and my cat always has food around. So why shouldn't Roger have food around when he wants to eat? And you just put a little bit of this powder in one of those cups and you mix it up with water and that's that. But, um, you know, he's got to eat his insects and he likes to hunt them. So I try to give him uh, crickets, usually three of the small crickets of every couple of days. So like maybe twice a week or something, I'll just pull out one of those black tubes and however many crickets are in it is how many he's getting. Usually it's about three. And that's that. So anyway, I hope you maybe learned something about keeping crickets from this video. Keeping insects is not something I ever thought I would do in my life as I have not like them for most of my life, actually been terrified of insects for most of my childhood, but I've been slowly working on getting over my fear of bugs and having Roger, who I love, who needs bugs, has definitely helped that. I'm definitely getting over it. It's a slow process, uh, but this is how I keep my crickets and how I care for them. I think it's a pretty solid method, but if you have any comments or concerns or any ideas for me, please let me know about them in the comments below. I would love to hear what you have to say. And again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.